questions, please? Roll call, missing Mark and non-named. Can I get a motion to approve granted additions to the agenda for tonight? No agendas for tonight. No additions, I'm sorry. Go ahead and move for approval of the uh, agenda. I second it. We had a motion and a second to approve the agenda for March 8th. All in favor, saying by aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Passed with all present. Item four, preliminary and final plat and planned unit development, 40 view acres. Yep, you can go ahead and pop, open it. Notice of public hearing, the Way Park Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at City Hall, 1913th Avenue North, 6.30 or soon thereafter, Tuesday, March 8th, 2022 to hear the following request. Request to Robert C. and Helen K. Trisco for the review of primary and final <coughs> plat of Quarry, a Quarry View Acres and for the review planned unit development. The subject property is summar summarized as part of the east half of the southwest quarter of Section 19 Township 124, Range 28, all in the City of Way Park, Stearns County, Minnesota. Public hearing open 632. Uh, Chair Jansky, Planning Commission members, uh, folks in attendance, anyone watching at home. Uh, this request was submitted by Bob and Helen Trisco, again for a review of a uh, proposed preliminary and final plat of uh, Quarry View Acres. Uh, we have seen uh, this general area uh, recently. Uh, the property was recently rezoned. Uh, from R1 to R2, which allows for twin homes, duplex, and patio homes, in addition to the uh, traditional single family dwellings. Uh, that was done in anticipation of a, of a proposed plat, and now we're seeing uh, that. Um, the map in front of you just gives the uh, general location for those not familiar with it at County Road 137, uh, 7th Street South, uh, 28th Avenue vicinity. Concept plans uh, submitted as part of the rezoning request at that time uh, noted that the consideration of a planned unit development component would be likely as some of the sites proposed for uh, patio and twin home development um, were proposed at a smaller size than the R2 standard of 7,300 square foot per, per dwelling, and particularly those uh, along the, uh, the eastern boundary. Which, uh, cursor. Um, those come in at about 4,250 square feet per unit and those parcels, some of these parcels on the southern boundary um, are slightly bigger but still smaller than the ordinance standard at a 5,992 square feet per dwelling unit, give or take. The submitted preliminary and final plats have held true to the, to the concepts reviewed at the uh, time of rezoning uh, with a blend of single family dwellings, patio homes, and twin homes. Uh, staff is supportive of the proposed layouts and believe them to be set in an uh, appropriate uh, logical manner given the surrounding adjacent uses to minimize locations of the uh, larger traditional single family dwelling parcels nearby to the um, adjacent uh, industrial uses that are located nearby. I'm going to see if I can rotate this for, for folks here. This page gives a a good idea of the, the breakdown of the kinds of units here. Uh, I would add on, on the topic of the industrial nature of the adjacent and uh, existing properties to the east particularly, uh, it's been previously recommended to the applicants that some consideration be given to provision of screening or berming and landscaping um, just to get some separation from those existing um, industrial uses. Uh, the small parcels uh, proposed for those eastern twin home properties in particular don't leave uh, much, if any, room for, for much screening. Uh, I, I don't see that there's any screening reflected on these plans, but 
um, I would strongly encourage that, make that a conditional approval that uh, applicants are advised to, to look at that. Uh, the city council does reserve the, the aspect to uh, potentially modify or require that as, par as part of their approval if this were to go forward. I'd also like to make, uh, make clear that the city would have, would have no intent to take action on in the adjacent industrial properties with their current operations and advise the applicants that should the development proceed, they would do so with the full knowledge and understanding of the nature of those adjacent industrial uses and their pre-existing conditions. Um, basically, anyone who would wish to purchase a, a property or occupy a property on that side would have to do so with the understanding that it's their responsibility uh, and not the adjacent properties to provide any screening they deem necessary. And the city would have no intent to get involved or mediate any disputes that may arise related to the industrial nature of those uh, neighboring properties. And that would include, but not limited to, noise, odor, hours of operation, outside storage, lighting, and general conditions of operation. Anyone that would purchase or occupy a, a dwelling on, on that area does so on their own volition and uh, with that understanding. I, I don't want to get into a scenario where somebody would buy a property there and then come back and complain that they're next to a, an industrial area. They have to know what they're getting into. Uh, given the location of the proposed development along the county right-of-way, uh, the County Road 137 in this case, staff has afforded the, the plats to uh, Stearns County Highway Department for their review and comment. We would incorporate any comments received from them and as part of the, the final review by the City Council, and that also gets reflected on a cert certification that uh, they provide for recording at the final plat. As the property has not been previously platted, parkland dedication would need to be addressed. We've had some discussions with the applicants and uh, the city does not have a desire for, for parkland with this particular proposal and the payment in lieu of parkland dedication would be required. The, app, the developers uh, are welcome to include open areas or uh, tot lots, typically small parks uh, at their discretion, but uh, they would not be counted by the city for parkland dedication nor maintained by the city. With 85 parcels proposed and with the city fee schedule requirement of $836 per parcel, uh, the total proposed requirement for payment in lieu would be approximately $71,060. That amount is subject to review and approval by Park Board and City Council and city staff has indicated <coughs> openness to phasing of uh, payments or other options to, to make that uh, a little more palatable and a little more viable for um, the developers, but that uh, that decision and uh, guidance ultimately rests with the uh, park board and the city council who has not yet reviewed that particular <coughs> request. As this request includes a public hearing component, the planning commission uh, does have the, uh, the option to uh, have folks come up and, and review. Um, I would recommend approval of the uh, preliminary plat of quarry view acres with the following conditions. Uh, I have five here recommended. Uh, number one, development upon the property may be subject to a development agreement with the city if deemed necessary. Uh, for uh, a project of this, of this scope, uh, we would be looking at a development agreement. Uh, number two, development is subject to comments and requirements set forth by Stearns County Highway Department review and certification. Number three, developers acknowledge existing nature of adjacent industrial uses and that the city will not intervene or mediate any disputes that may arise between property owners. Number four, developers are strongly advised to consider and implement screening plan on Eastern Boundary. And lastly, number five, uh, the property is subject to requirement for payment in lieu of parkland dedication as recommended by Park Board and established by City Council. Any required parkland dedication fees must be paid prior to affixing of city signatures upon the plat. Provided that these conditions are satisfied, I'd recommend approval of the final plat as well. <laughs> On the uh, the plan unit development component, which gives the, the ability to kind of vary from the, the uh, typical standards when we have a, a master plan for a larger area, uh, my recommendation would be for approval with the following five conditions. First, uh, development upon the property would be subject to a development agreement. Uh, number two, the development should shall adhere to concept plans as submitted for development on per parcel basis. Minor deviations from plans may be approved administratively per city ordinance by planning and community, de community development director. 
but changes deemed major by the same uh, may require additional review and approval by planning commission and or city council. Number three, developers acknowledge existing nature of adjacent industrial uses and that the city will not intervene or mediate any disputes that may arise between the property owners. Number four, developers are strongly advised to consider and implement screening plan on eastern boundary. And lastly, number five, uh, developments is subject to review and approval by city engineer and city public works director regarding provision of utilities and public rights of way. Um, those being my uh, recommendations and report, that would conclude uh, my report on this particular issue and soon we can open it up to questions. Thanks, John. Uh, it is a public hearing. Does anybody have anything to say for or against or any comments on it? Please come up to the podium. State your name and address, please. Sure. <clears throat> Tom Ardolf, 2992 County Road 137, Way Park. Um, with this particular design, and you maybe know we own the property uh, immediately south to that, how would you foresee um, us bringing city sewer and water? Would it come off of something here? Would it have to come from across 137? Any thoughts on how um, uh, some degree of integration can take place. Uh, Mr. Arnold, that's something we'd have to really look at kind of if, if and when it comes to that point. Uh, if, if there's an option to come off of this development uh, and that ends up being the most viable or cost-effective approach, um, my assumption would be that the city would, would look at a way to do that first and foremost rather than come across 137, but it really depends on kind of the, the end development and, and if whatever would come on your property would, would line up prop properly for that. But we're always gonna be open to the best, most efficient way to get it there. And if, if there's a means to, to do that with a cross connection to this, this development, if it goes forward and the timing lines up, that's all the better. But um, that's something that's really under, under the realm of the, the engineers and the, the public works that I, I can't really speak to that much more than, than what I've said, I, I guess. But how deep is the, because um, I think uh, we were speaking that it, they'd be hooking up on what is termed County Road 137 or mm -hmm. um, 7th Street South on that northeast corner basically. How deep is this uh, sewer and water at that depth about, do you know? I, I don't have that information offhand, unfortunately. The, the uh, applicants may, but I, I don't have it okay. immediately in front of me, I'm sorry. Okay, just because on the other side, if we have to go all the way to the other side, that's where it's at 40 foot deep. Yeah, I, 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 I do know with. just from, from previous discussions with that, you know, that it, it drops off pretty steeply from kind of the north on this property to, to the south on when we get towards yours. Unfortunately, okay. it's just that, um, just kind of the nature of the beast there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the public? I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. <coughs> I'll second that. Got a motion and a second to close public hearing. All in favor, sing by saying aye. 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 Close same sign. <laughs> public hearing closed at 644. <clears throat> uh, John, I have a couple of questions uh, with regard to the, uh, we've, we've kind of had of a minimum lot size and we deviate from this on the, the planned unit developments and so on and so forth. Do we, uh, I'm remiss in not knowing, but do we have an absolute minimum lot size that we'll accept? Do you know? or by the same token, minimum of side yard setbacks and so on and so forth that have to be maintained? No, there's, it, it varies um, from development to development. Um, there's, there's the, the planning and development process allows us to, to really minimize that. Um, but I can say there's a, a parallel um, in the city in another development that's uh, oriented towards seniors where um, the parcels are probably fairly equivalent to the eastern parcels here, are, are probably around that, that 4,500 to 5,000 square foot mark. Those have five yard 
si uh, excuse me, five foot side yard setbacks, five foot, um, and um, I, w I wouldn't recommend much less than, than five foot um, for a side yard setback. With the, with the twin homes, you know, there, there's a shared common wall hmm, in the middle, yeah. but um, you know, five foot is probably about the minimum of, of my comfort level. Is, is, does that become an issue for the fire department? No, not when, not when they have five foot side by side. And there, that's enough to get get in between when you have ten. Okay. Does that count the roof overhang, or is that just the roof? That's just that's just the the foundation. That's typically where it's measured from. Roof overhang is excluded. We have when we when we go forward with with uh, kind of more formal review as things sort of progress, um, we always take things to the to the uh, fire chief for review and make sure they got turning movements and stuff. And um, their initial review with this, that there wasn't any major concerns that they can get around and get in there, especially when, they, when they're able to uh, get off the street right there. You know, if, if it were tucked way back in a cul-de-sac or something, yeah. that'd be a little different story. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, got, I do have another question. Um, we typically take payment in lieu of parkland. Is there ever uh, is there ever a time when we demand parkland? I mean, say for instance, you have development after development after development, and we've got a, a lot of family residents. Um, does there come a time when we need to demand parkland? There, there would be, yeah. If, if this were, if, if this were, and that time isn't now, um, per our public work side, that's something that that we we looked at and discussed with the applicants. Um, you know, say that hypothetically, if, if this development were to be built out fully and then uh, adjacent property were to be built out fully as residential, that could potentially be a time where, where we may wanna have a, a city park in that area. Um, but it's it comes down to number one, that it, it didn't really hit that threshold yet. And then number two, staffing, uh, because another city park is another another area to maintain and, and take care of, and they're, they're just not equipped for that at this particular time. Hmm. But at some point, it could reach that point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that point of saturation, I guess you'd call it. Yep. Okay. I just, I wonder. Yeah, enough of, enough of the demand could, could and would trigger that when the, when the time is right. I, uh, because that's not under my umbrella, um, it's not something I, I know what exactly the threshold is, if there's a formal formula or something along the like that, that says when we get this density point or this number of dwellings and X acres, that's when it hits that tipping point. It could be, uh, or if it's just kind of at the discretion of the of the park board and, and the public work staff. Okay, just wondering, thank you. John, I noticed on, you have well, both of the conditions are the same, but light and the screening press and the screening on the east side, I think that'd be a very big thing if it's over on the east side. The emphasis on it somehow. Sorry? On the screening on the east side of the property, is there any way we can put like an emphasis on it to try to push that harder? We can, um, and it, it could be something that may even change in review from planning commission to city council, depending a little bit. I, I don't know if I'm totally comfortable not requiring something on, on that side, just because I, I, I have a strong inkling that if it's not put in place or if we don't require it, it could, it could potentially become an issue. Um, I, I don't think that the layout on that side, it, it makes sense from a planning standpoint to have your smaller parcels, twin homes, be, be on, on that side because they're, uh, they're a little more compressed and they're at a little lower price point. So it makes sense to, to provide those to insulate the, the larger parcels, the ones that are more costly, um, from a, a little bit of a buffer. Uh, and that is logical, but um, the small size also doesn't allow for something like a, a berming or something that you typically you know, recommend. But, but you something? can certainly do fencing or something. I like that idea. Yeah, it, it, I would not have an issue of modifying that to require a, a, a screening plan, you know, whether it's fencing or, or um, I typically would recommend some sort of fencing because it tends to be sturdier than 
it, it's a little more of a guarantee than than plantings. Can we change strongly advised to must? Well, do you know, just take it, it can home. be changed from from uh, from recommended or advised to requ a screening plan. Take out the developments are strongly be advised. Required. Can, it's considered an and from and to the left. Take all that out. So it says implement a screening plan on Eastern Boundary. So let's look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's look at it a different way, John. Do you do you feel the city is adequately covered with this verbiage? I do, but that doesn't mean we. There could still be an attempt to, to bring us into a, a dispute, and for as much as you think someone knows what they're getting into when once they're there and and they're living there next to it, that's when it when it tends to become a problem. You know, some for some it's entirely entirely subjective because one person may have no issue with it whatsoever, and then if, for another person, mm -hmm. if they're up and going early and you know there's noise next door, or there's a, a dirt pile or a tire pile or whatever, it could it's the end of the world. It's it varies person to person. That's that's the that's just the you know you're going to run into that when you're trying to infill some of these areas that that are pockmarked with little you know industrial developments here and there that are old township areas. That's something we're we're always going to run up against. You know, over time, those may sunset, but you know, there's there's always going to be a little bit of conflict in some of our outlying areas with with any new development. But as as a new development, I think we should take the pro approach and have something put there. It can always come down. As, I, as I would agree. Like I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, I would I would suggest that to require fencing. You know, uh, plantings may be above and beyond. That's fine, but uh, I think fencing would be a little more of a guarantee as part of a piece part of a development. Yeah, plantings are great, but they they need to be maintained, and you know who's going to maintain them, and is that the take room? Well, they they do take room. They take more, right? And there, I think you know, the fencing is a one-time cost, you know, by and large, and there's going to be maintenance and periodic maintenance or if whatever. You place a panel here and there, but <coughs> I, I think I think it's a bare minimum for to give a little bit of a, a little bit of separation that's not there from the from the adjacent industrial uses. Does fencing become the uh, onus of the homeowner to keep up? It would be not necessarily if it's something that they have a homeowners association. Uh, that would be up to them. Uh, when when there's a plan unit development, we require that there's a that if, that if there is a homeowners association, we have to be provided a copy of the bylaws. The city doesn't enforce them, but we have to be aware of them. But it, but if not, then it's something that uh, you know, if there's a continuous section, uh, they have to work it out with the with the buyers to. Everybody maintains their own some sort of a you know condo mm -hmm. agreement or or something, and that that could be left. You know, we can iron out the details on that a little bit. But if if we have some if, some verbiage that says it's required, that that if we require we we recommend a fence, for instance, are we taking on the commitment of? Defining the height and everything else, or are we just can we just say it as a fence and then? I, I think I think we have to require a, a solid opaque fence. I don't think we can. No, I don't want to see a four foot chain link fence because that's not going to do anything. Right. Okay. Aside from that, you know the specifics. I, I think you just put it that. Um, it's well, that su su subject screening. subject screening plan subject to review and approval by city staff. That's that's usually the the wording we would use. Thank you, actually, uh, Mr. Chair. I will make a motion to recommend approval of this application with the uh, five recommendations, uh, number four having been amended. We had a motion. Do I have a second? Yes, I'll second that motion. We had a motion and a second to approve with the recommendations with the amendments. All in favor, signal saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign.
improved with all that all that is present. And unit unit development. Any other new business? We got a planned unit development. We got that one too. Same thing. It's just that one. Oh right. Okay. I got it mixed up with that one too. Yep. And with the with the plan of development, I'd recommend changing the the screening component to reflect the, the same as it was just motioned. All right. I'll make a motion then that we approve the uh, uh, planned unit development um, five conditions with uh, number four being. Um, amended to uh, implementing a screening plan on the eastern boundary. <coughs> I will second that motion also. Got a motion and a second to approve with changes on the recommendations on number four. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passed with all present. Uh, just just want to make a note the date on this for the city council is TBD right now so we'll we'll keep you posted on uh, the projected date I know we, we have to get it to the park board for their review and we'll be in discussion on like the park on dedication so um, we'll, we'll get it there as soon as we can we'll, we'll keep in touch <coughs> I did have one one note to add it's not not an agenda item but um, especially for those anyone watching at home, uh, I would encourage everybody to uh, go to the website planweightpark one word uh, dot com, planweightpark dot com. Uh, we have that website set up for our uh, city strategic and comprehensive planning process, and there's a, a survey on there uh, slated to be open for a few more weeks that gives folks an opportunity to comment and input on the. Uh, um, future of the city and where folks want to see us go. So I encourage you to visit planweightpark.com. Planweightpark.com? Yep. <coughs> all right, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. And a motion second to adjourn. All in favor, saying aye. 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 Meeting over at 658. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>